Look, we can't all be Macaulay Culkin, throwing together deadly Saw-style traps when we're home alone. Besides, I don't think traps are gonna work on the things that invaded in these Home Alone stories. Welcome back to Unexplained Encounters. I'm your host, Darkness Prevails, and you should follow me on Twitter at Dark Prevails, because YouTube recently tried to demonetize my channel, and I'm pretty sure we only got it fixed because we were able to come together and get YouTube's attention on Twitter. Today's episode features new and scary Home Alone stories, some of which actually gave me goosebumps. Don't forget that I need you to scare me, so send me your absolutely creepiest stories of the unexplained at darkstories.org. Also, consider supporting what I do by signing up for EerieCast Plus at eeriecast.com plus. You'll even get some extra goodies. Now, let's begin. I saw a strange woman while home alone. From Harry Kay. Growing up, I always loved the time I had when I was home by myself. Even though I was an only child, I loved the freedom that came when mom and dad were out of the house. Ordinarily, I would just hang out, eat a lot of junk food, and play video games. Unfortunately, the relaxation that came with being by myself didn't come this time. It happened on a late Friday afternoon, sometime in late October. I live in a coastal city, and it rains quite often, accompanied by heavy fog. That day was no different. The fog was thick, and the white noise of the rain blanketed most of the typical city noise. My parents were gone on a trip to catch a band they both loved touring. They were going to return Monday, and since I was 16, they figured I'd be okay on my own for just a few days. I was in the living room, playing Halo Reach on my Xbox. The TV was on the wall in front of me, and to the left was the window that faced outside. I had the curtains open, because I enjoyed the ambience of the rain and fog. That was when I first noticed her. After finishing up a match, and being rather frustrated with my poor KD, I glanced outside without thinking, and I had to do a double take. What I saw was strange. It was a woman walking down the sidewalk in front of my house. Only she was moving very slowly. That's what first caught my attention. The more I looked at her, the more out of place she seemed. For one, she wasn't dressed for the weather at all. She wore a low-cut dress with no coat, no jacket that I could see. Secondly, she was very tall. Just judging from my window, I'd guess she would have been around six foot six, as she dwarfed the maple tree on the sidewalk. She had short black hair and was very pretty. It didn't make sense to me why she was walking so slowly through the pouring rain in nothing but a thin dress. Then again, it was none of my business, so I queued up for another game, occasionally glancing at the tall woman who was still inching herself along the property. Now, just before she cleared the view of the window, though, I could have sworn I saw her turn and look directly at me before disappearing around the corner. The rest of that night was mostly uneventful, until about 10 o'clock. By then, the fog had cleared for the most part, but the rain was still fast and heavy. At that point, I think I was watching something on Netflix. I looked out the window again, and I saw her. I could barely make out her figure under the orange glow of the streetlight, but I knew it was the same impossibly tall woman from before. However, this time, she was moving even slower. She was barely going a foot every ten seconds. I paused the show and watched in disbelief as she slowly made her way down the sidewalk. As she walked under the streetlight, she became completely illuminated and what I saw freaked me out. She looked injured. Her dress was partially torn, and her face and upper body were covered in what looked to be dirt. 
She continued to inch herself down the sidewalk, and I decided to do something. As this woman was clearly hurt, or damaged in some way. I opened up the front door, walked out onto the porch, and I was about to call out to her. To my confusion and unease, in the instant I took my eyes off of her to get from the living room to the porch, she disappeared. I was so confused. Even if she had started to sprint as soon as I got up, there was no way she would have been able to clear my line of sight. I struggled to shrug this event off, thinking about it until I went to bed that night. Surprisingly, I slept rather well. I woke up at 9.30, refilled my cat's food bowl, and refreshed his water, all the while noting how heavy the rain and fog were. I played more Halo for a while. I finished up a match and decided to take a break. Pressing the menu button, my Xbox told me it was noon. I put down the controller to get a snack and some water. When I came back into the living room, I habitually looked out the window again. I saw her once more. She was hard to make out because of the fog, but since it was noon, it was a lot brighter than last night. This time she moved almost with a hunchback. She looked incredibly tired, and her dress, or what remained of it, was soaked with rain. It had large cuts and gashes in the fabric, revealing underneath more skin, covered in the strange muck I saw the night before. I was stunned as she moved at a snail's pace along the sidewalk. Across the street, I could make out someone else walking the opposite direction. I was relieved as I thought they'd help this obviously distressed girl. But instead, they just kept walking at a regular pace. In fact, they didn't even stop to look at her. It was almost as if they couldn't see her. As the other pedestrian cleared the view of my window, the tall woman suddenly clutched her chest and collapsed to her knees. This snapped me out of my trance, and I shot straight up from my seat and went out the front door. I quickly walked down the path, phone in hand, in case I needed to call an ambulance. When I got to the end, however, there was no one there. I looked up and down the sidewalk. There was no sign of that woman. What in the world? I remember muttering. I examined the spot where I thought she collapsed, and at first, I didn't see a thing. As I crouched down, though, I felt it get hotter, and without thinking, I touched my hand to the pavement. Somehow, in the middle of thick rain, that part of the sidewalk radiated heat, and it seemed impossibly hot. For the rest of the day, nothing out of the ordinary happened. I did not see that woman again, nor did I on Sunday. Even so, I was still nervous, as I had no realistic explanation for what had happened so far. I remember I was getting ready to go to sleep on Sunday night, after finishing cleaning the house for my parents' return the next day. It was just around midnight, and I'd gotten under my covers, when I heard a very distinct knock at the door. It was thick and slow, ringing out three times. Who in the world could it be at this hour, I thought. I went to the door, slowly, trying not to make any noise, so whoever was out there wouldn't know I was home. I then looked through the peephole. I saw no one. I was confused. I opened the door and glanced around the porch and the front yard. From what I could tell, no one was anywhere nearby. I shook my head, thinking I may have imagined the knock. I was very tired, after all. As I went back inside, though, something at the bottom of the door caught my eye. I picked it up. It was a lollipop. A bright red, rather large lollipop, wrapped in plastic that was tied to the stem with a thin black ribbon. I took it inside and examined it further. It had no brand or stamp, no logo of any kind. It was just a generic lollipop. 
What was odd, though, was the black ribbon. It was an impossibly deep shade of black, almost eating up the light of the dining room. It felt sort of like cotton, only it was softer, yet at the same time, stronger. After playing with it for a few minutes, I decided it was probably unsafe, and I threw it out, but I did save the black ribbon. Something about it just attracted me to it. It was long enough to wear as a bracelet, so I put it on without much thought. I went to bed soon after that. Monday was uneventful, and when my parents returned and asked how everything went, I simply said, fine, deciding I didn't want to try to explain the woman I saw. And from that point on, I didn't see her again. Well, until a few days ago which is why I decided to write this story out. In my town, we have subways, only they're elevated above ground. I was returning home from my friend's house, standing at the train platform, preparing to board. It was around midnight, and no one else was on either platform. When I looked up from my phone, I was shocked. Directly across from me stood the woman the same lady I'd seen so many months before. I knew it was her, as I could see her very clearly. She seemed impossibly tall, about six foot ten, though she did have heels on. She wore the same dress she always had been, only this time it was clean and undamaged. She also wore a thin pair of glasses, the same deep black color of her hair. It was stunning to me how beautiful she was. As I kept staring at her, practically paralyzed, she waved at me, smiling, and started to tug at her left wrist with her other hand. Looking at my wrist, I saw that that was where I tied the black ribbon from before when I'd found that lollipop. I smiled back at her. A train then quickly came around the corner, stopping in front of her and breaking our line of sight. I suppose she must have boarded, as when the train passed, the platform was empty again. From that day on, I never saw the woman again. I have no clue who she was, or why she walked by my house so many times. I have no doubt I'll remember her for the rest of my life, though. And yes, I still do have that ribbon, though to this day I've never felt a fabric quite like it. I like to think of it as a gift, or something like that. After all, it seemed like she wanted me to have it. The Cat Saw It Too From The Woo This encounter occurred eight years ago, and still gives me chills to this day. It was the weekend, a seemingly normal, warm, and sunny afternoon. I was home alone. My dad was at work, and my sister and mother were out running errands. I was still in school at the time and had arranged earlier in the week to play video games with my friends. Back then, Minecraft was very popular amongst my friend group, and Skype was still the popular default communication channel. So at the agreed-upon time, I logged on, greeted my friends, and joined one of the popular Minecraft survival servers. We played for an hour without incident, laughing and having a great time. I then decided to take a small break, to retrieve something from the kitchen. I saw my cat Fudge at the back door, wanting to be let in. Fudge was a relatively small, dark-colored tabby cat, hence her name, and preferred the outdoors. It was a nice surprise that she sought to be indoors with me, so I let her inside and she followed me down to my room. I picked her up and put her on my bed so she could settle down and sleep. Then I put my headphones back on, rejoining the game, continuing to game with my friends. Now this is when things began to get strange. For some context, at the time of the encounter my bed faced the entry to my room and the placement of my desk I used to game at had me facing the wall, with my back to the door. After a few more Minecraft survival rounds, I began to notice that Fudge was refusing to settle in, becoming increasingly more on edge. 
Her eyes were wide, pupils dilated, and her gaze was fixed intensely on the corner of my room. I frowned, confused, but just chalked it up to her signaling me she wanted to leave. So I brushed off her behavior and continued the game, because the door was open, and if she wanted to leave, she was free to do so. But her behavior continued to escalate, becoming more and more strange. So strange that I could hardly focus on my game anymore. She began to pace back and forth along the bed, slowly at first, then with more speed, back and forth, back and forth, until she was practically sprinting across the duvet. Eyes growing wider, the fur on her tail standing on end and growing in volume, my attention was now completely on this cat, the feeling of dread and unease beginning to grow. That's also when I began to feel as though I was being watched, feeling as though I was no longer alone in my own house. My friends asked if I was okay, as I had suddenly gone quiet on my end, trying to deduce what was going on. I nervously laughed, explaining that Fudge had began to act sporadic, also attempting to justify her behavior to myself as a random burst of chaotic energy that cats sometimes get. But that feeling of being watched and my cat's strange behavior intensified even more, and I could no longer ignore it. Finally, I removed my headphones to get her to calm down attempting to figure out what had gotten her so worked up. But then, the temperature in the room began to drop, growing unnaturally cold despite the hot Australian weather outside. And that's when it happened. Fudge dove off the bed, sprinted across my bedroom floor, and leapt so high she almost hit the ceiling. I swear I'd never seen an animal jump to such a height before. Whilst in the air, she outstretched her paw and attempted to swipe at something in the corner of the room before violently hurtling past, leaving me there stunned. Then it appeared. A dark shadow, gray in color, transparent and missing its lower half. It stood, no, hovered, towering over me. It had no features, no face, no eyes, but I knew it was glaring directly at me. Terror, cold, primal fear, and dread overwhelmed me. Every hair on my body stood up on end. I couldn't move. This shadow figure lingered there, silent, unmoving, unwavering, just staring right into me for what felt like an eternity. At last, my flight instincts kicked in. I followed my cat, bolting out the door past the now dissipating dark, cold figure, down the hall and into the lounge room as quickly as I could. My heart pounded and my hands trembled. I frequently glanced back towards the hall to see if it had followed me or if it would reappear as I used the home phone to dial my mom and sister. As the phone rang, I turned on the TV for some background noise, scared of the silence. Eventually, my mom picked up. I frantically questioned them about their whereabouts and if they would be home anytime soon. She exclaimed she had just finished the food shopping and was about to head back. My sister, having overheard the conversation and the obvious panic in my voice, asked what was wrong. I explained everything that happened. The cat's weird behavior, the temperature drop in the room, the feelings of being watched, and finally, the shadow appearing in the corner in broad daylight. I begged them to come home, to return as fast as they could, still looking over my shoulder as I spoke. They were skeptical, but remained on the phone with me on their drive home. After an agonizing while, I saw my mom's car pull into the driveway, and I felt safe enough then to hang up, relieved I was no longer alone. I once again explained everything that occurred in their absence, beginning to really process what I'd experienced myself. I tried to rationalize with myself as I was met with their disbelief, 
but the more I tried to answer their questions, the less it began to make sense. In fact, I probably wouldn't have believed it myself. I would have brushed it off as a trick of the light even. But that would not explain Fudge's reaction, or her odd behavior before it appeared. By the time my family went to investigate, the shadow figure was gone, and only questions lingered. Why had it appeared in the middle of the day? What did it want from me? And how long had it been there before my cat finally noticed it? I refused to enter my room for the next week, and so did my cat. I was too scared that the shadow figure would appear once again, and still, even after all these years, I can't help but stare in the direction of that corner. The same dread and fear that that emotionless, featureless, dark entity may show itself once more. It was only later that I'd learned that the previous homeowner's son experienced a similar strange encounter. He had seen an apparition of an elderly lady in the same corner of that room, and he too refused to enter the bedroom either. Was his encounter and mine related, or just a coincidence? We saw two differently described entities, but in the exact same location. I guess I'll never know. I'm just glad that I wasn't completely alone when it happened, and that Fudge the Cat saw it too. The South African Skinwalker from Danny13. This happened about a month ago. For context, I'm a 16-year-old girl living in South Africa. I was home alone, studying for the upcoming exams. My parents left to go to the store. Now, usually I enjoyed listening to music or podcasts through my earbuds. But my earbuds died, so I figured I would just turn up the volume on my phone speaker and listen that way. I'd finished a podcast, and I switched over to some music, helping me focus on my studies. During one song, however, Peyton Parrish's cover of the song Zombie, I heard something that sounded a lot like an echo coming from down the hall. Now we live in a pretty big house on a two-acre piece of land right outside the city, so there's a lot of space around us. My room was on the end of the hallway, and my desk was pushed up against the wall across from my door. So if you were to turn your head slightly to the left, you would see right into the hallway and the door leading to the kitchen. I paused my music, and I didn't hear anything at first. It was silent at the moment. The chickens were quiet, the dogs were quiet, even the hadedas were quiet. There was no sound, except for the washing machine and a car driving by. Then I heard it. Someone else was singing Peyton Parrish's cover of Zombie very softly. A deep sense of dread washed over me, and I slowly turned my head toward the hallway. And I wish I never had. In the doorway to the kitchen stood a short figure. It was completely white, with two black beady eyes staring at me. It must have been only around a meter tall, with long, spindly fingers that touched the floor. I began to hear it hum the melody again. I couldn't move as I looked at it, like I was paralyzed. Then I watched it slowly disappear behind the wall. As soon as it was out of sight, I jumped up, closing the door and locking it. Then our rooster crowed. That feeling of dread slowly faded away. I didn't open my door until I heard my parents come back. I have never seen that thing again, and I hope I never do. I know it's not the scariest or longest story, but it was the first time I've experienced something like this. As a side note, this happened in the middle of the day, around 2pm. It reminds me of the stories of skinwalkers, but that's a North American thing, far, far away from where I live in South Africa. But it does make me wonder, is there something like a skinwalker here? The Christmas Creature From The Goth Mistress 13 
At the time of this story, I was 20 years old. My ex-fiancé, Austin, was 21. I'd been with Austin for three years on Christmas 2018. We dated for maybe two months before moving in together. A month before the end of my senior year, he moved in with my parents and me. Then about four days before my graduation, we got our first house. It wasn't amazing or beautiful by any means, but it was ours. It wasn't in the best neighborhood, and it was cheap. The roof was really old, the basement leaked, all the windows were busted out, and the siding along the driveway was spray-painted. But we slowly repaired it and made it much more livable. About six months into living there, weird things started to happen around the house. I thought it was just because the house was settling, or I was just getting spooked because I was in a new place. Some mornings, my clothes I'd laid out on the dresser were in a pile on the floor or thrown about the room. On occasions when I was home alone, I would hear the floorboards in the hall creak, like someone was walking on them. Multiple times I would catch something out of the corner of my eye, and when I turned to look, it would be gone. I never said anything to my fiancé because I thought he would tell me it's nothing. Until one day, I saw him staring at the dark bedroom from the middle of the hall, and I called to him. He jumped and looked at me with fear in his eyes. Where did you just come from? He asked, his voice shaking a bit. I just came inside from the back porch. Why? I responded, looking at him confused. I just saw you standing in the dark in the bedroom. When I asked what you were doing, you just stood there and didn't acknowledge me. Then when I heard the back door shut, I looked that way, and when I looked back, you were just gone. He replied, glancing from me to the darkened bedroom. Babe, I swear I was outside. Plus, you know I'm afraid of the dark. I wouldn't just stand in it for no reason. I inched closer to him and hugged him as I said that. When the next horrifying incident happened, it was a week before Christmas. I'm a very festive person, so there was always some sort of light on in the house, whether it be from outside the house, or from the tree, or the lights I'd put down the hallway to illuminate the path to the bathroom. That night in particular, I was super exhausted. I had just gotten home from work, and I was settling in on the couch to watch some creepy videos on YouTube but I ended up passing out a few minutes in. I suddenly woke up to a deep silence at some point. I always had some sort of fan or white noise to relax myself, but it was quiet and pitch black in my house. I tried to use my phone to illuminate the area, but as I pressed the home button, it showed it was dead. Great, I thought realizing the situation I was in. All of our clocks were digital, so I didn't even know what time it was. I was too scared to move. It was just too dark. Dark enough for something to hide right next to you and you would never know it. I stayed still, breathing slowly, trying to listen to any sounds around me. After a few minutes, I began to hear the creaking of the basement stairs Crap, did I lock the basement door when I got home? I thought. I didn't wait to find out. I bolted from my bedroom, slamming and locking the door as I heard the basement door slam open and rapid footsteps in the hallway. The way my house was set up, if you come through the back door, you can either go down a flight of stairs to the basement, or you have to go up three steps to go through the doorway to the kitchen. From the kitchen, you can either keep going straight through the dining area and the living room, or you can turn and head to the hallway. At the hallway, the bathroom is right in the center, and either ends of the hall are the two bedrooms. I pressed my body against the door and sunk down, gripping my dead phone to my chest and trying to control my breathing. Whatever it was went to the other bedroom first, scratching on the door which slowly turned into bangs. When it got no response, 
It crept to my door, the door I had my back against. I knew it was too late to hide, too late to move, so I planted my feet on the floor and gripped the carpet tightly, bracing for whatever was to come. I felt the door try to give way as whatever it was pressed itself to the door, listening. I clasped a hand over my mouth and muffled a cry as a huge bang came from against the door. Then it scratched and beat against it. I could hear something in my mind telling me if I let that thing in here, my ex-fiance and family would never find my body. I kept myself pressed to the door for what felt like hours. Slowly, it walked away, creeping back to the basement, and I saw the glow of the hallway lights beneath my door. I looked down at my phone, and the bright Apple screen came up, powering it back on. I'd apparently missed a bunch of messages and calls from my ex fiance wondering why my phone was off and what was going on. It was only 1am. He was still at work, closing up. I turned on the phone flashlight and stood up, carefully opening the door. I was horrified to find nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was like everything had just gone on in my mind and not real life. I grabbed my vape, my phone, and a knife from my purse, and I sat outside in the cold until Austin came home. I told him about everything, but he didn't believe me. I was too terrified to be in that house alone, but unfortunately, that night did not mark the end of my suffering and torment. On Christmas Eve, I waited in my car as long as I deemed necessary until I had the courage to enter the house. It was completely black inside, and I was scared. I took my flashlights I had near the door and turned them on, facing the kitchen. Three candles were lit and placed on the floor next to me. I held Austin's BB gun in my hands. With every noise, I would pump that BB gun, mentally daring anything to come out. At about 11.55 p.m., I heard something start running around the outside of the house, banging on the windows and doors. I pumped up the gun to its full power and aimed for the kitchen. I had intentionally left that door unlocked and was prepared for whatever came for me. Then, the back door burst open and a figure raced up the stairs into the kitchen. I fired. The figure collapsed with a groan. Only then did I realize it was Austin. He had come home from work early to surprise and scare me. He lay on the floor groaning and cursing at me as I helped him up. This time it was him, and I was so relieved. Next time, though, it could be something else, and I would be ready. It got inside my house. From Anonymous I've always experienced small paranormal things throughout my childhood. A couple of unexplained knocks here, seeing something out of the corner of my eye there, everything of that sort. But never have I ever had something this severe happen to me. And I know I'm not crazy. My little sister experienced it with me. I was playing video games on my console in my room. I must have been around 11 years old, and I still shared a room with my sister. She sat on the bottom bunk bed beneath me, watching me play games. The two of us were home alone, which was something we were used to, especially during summer break. This wasn't anything new to us. Our guards were down, and we were relaxed. The clock struck 2 p.m., and we heard someone unlock the front door and open it. Our dogs started barking, and our parrots started to scream, which was the typical sound you'd hear when you walk in. We assumed it was our mom getting off work, but she usually greeted all the animals quite loudly. Whoever went into our house stayed silent, but still, we didn't think anything of it. Maybe our mother just wasn't in the mood, 
We then heard the person open the door to our parents' room and walk in. I continued to play my games with my sister watching. We were at that for about an hour. But then we started to get concerned when our mother did not walk out of her room. Usually, she would go in there to change out of her work clothes and come back to say hello to us. She was never this quiet. We started to get uneasy. Getting frantic, my sister and I grabbed something. We were too scared to leave our room, so we grabbed anything inside it. My sister got herself a giant hydro flask water bottle to bludgeon any stranger, and I grabbed myself a sharp pointed pen. As we approached our door, we started to realize we were too scared to even leave. We exited the house through the window to see an empty driveway, meaning no one had come home, not even our parents. So who had we heard? We were even more frantic now, making our way to our neighbor's house. Our neighbor was a big, scary dude who, if you saw him alone downtown, you'd probably be scared for your life. But he was a sweet guy, and we always got to see his dogs. We entered his house and told him everything with teary eyes. He agreed to go over and check our house. I mean, how couldn't he? Two little girls were crying for their lives on his living room carpet. We went back to our house together and opened the front door, which was now unlocked. We knew for a fact it was locked before when our parents left. You would have needed a passcode to unlock that door, which when typed correctly would make a little whirring sound. My sister and I both heard that sound earlier when the stranger entered our home. Staying closely behind our neighbor, we checked every corner of the house. Finally, we made it to our parents' room, where we'd heard that thing go in. We opened the door and looked everywhere. Under the bed, behind furniture, in the closet, in the shower, we searched every nook and cranny, but to no avail. Nothing was stolen either. Everything was in perfect condition. So who went in there? And why? And to think my room door was unlocked while this thing went into our home. It's so scary. This never did happen again. In fact, not a single minor experience has happened since. I still can't explain it. If it was a person, how were there no signs of escape? Why didn't they take anything? How did they break in with a passcode? I still don't know. It's been years now, and it still freaks me the heck out. The Many Voices in My Ears From Dark Voice My mother, half-sister, stepdad, and I lived on an old farm in Sweden when this happened. In Sweden, as it probably is everywhere else, it's not really normal for weird stuff to happen like ghosts or skinwalkers. The farm hadn't been used as a farm for a while, and it was a long way to walk to our closest neighbor. I was 10 or 11 years old back then. I liked watching scary movies and listening to scary stories, but I didn't really believe in ghosts or cryptids. I still honestly don't, even after what happened to me. I think it was because I was a little sick back then. But what do I know? So I'd just gotten home from school one day. We lived quite far from the city where both my mom and stepdad worked, and my sister was too young to be home alone. I was always home alone by myself for quite some time, but I liked having alone time at home. As I picked out a snack to eat in my room, which was on the second floor, I heard something in the walls as I walked upstairs. We'd had a couple of cats for a while in that house, so I didn't really believe this was a rat or mouse. I just thought it was in my head, as I was quite tired after school. So I just kept on walking up the stairs. Then the same day later that night, something woke me up in the middle of the night. I don't know what woke me up exactly, but I did hear something. Then out of nowhere I heard a weak, faded voice from my doorframe. 
but I couldn't understand what it said. I turned my head, and nothing was there. So I turned my head away from the door and tried to fall asleep. But then I heard another voice, weak and faded, also from the doorframe, but a bit louder. Still, I couldn't understand what it said, and it was a different voice than the first. The first voice had sounded like a female, but the second one sounded male. Both were voices I had never heard before. I turned my head again, and nothing was there. I was so confused now, so I chose not to turn my head away from the door and tried to sleep. After a bit, I heard another weak and faded voice. It was a female, but a different female voice. When I listened closer, I heard more than one voice, but they were more quiet. I was getting scared then. I opened my eyes to see who or what was at my door, and guess what? Nothing. I tried my best to ignore it, but I kept hearing those voices from my door. Each one weak and faded, but they became louder and louder until I could understand what they said. They were saying, Jonathan, over and over again, and nothing else. That's my name. So of course, when I finally understood what they were saying, I was horrified. I wanted to get up and run out of the room, but I couldn't. It was like a hand held me down, making sure that I could not move. I heard more and more different voices chiming in and saying my name louder and louder. Jonathan. 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 Not only were they louder, but also closer. So close, it sounded like they were right on the side of my bed. It kept going until it sounded like they were screaming my name in my ear, not like someone screaming on the outside of your ear. No, like they were inside my head, screaming my name. I tried to cover my ears, but like I said, it was like it was coming from inside me, so it didn't help at all. This kept going until it felt like I was going to go deaf. Then, it all stopped at the same time. I'm still not sure if it was because I had a small fever, or if it was something else, or someone else. After we moved from that place, it never happened again. Just getting started. From no one. This is one of my earliest memories. I was about three to four years old. We had moved into a house that was recently built. We were the first to live there, of course. My family and I were opening our presents on Christmas morning. It was me, my dad, my mom, and older brother. I just opened this play phone. It was a pink Barbie plastic dial-up type. I was exaggerating as if someone was calling and I was answering the phone. When I put it up to my ear and said hello, I heard an older man say something through the toy phone. I was so startled, I slammed down the handset and stared at it in disbelief. Even though I was quite young, I still understood it was just a toy and I should not have heard anyone else talking. My mom turned to me, asking what was wrong. I just said that there was a man on the phone. Of course, she didn't believe me, but I know it happened. I didn't believe it either. I just have no explanation for what I heard. The voice was older and gruff. That's all I can remember about it. Not too long after that, we moved from that house to the next. This next one was a two-story house that had a lot of activity that my whole family experienced. The first thing we noticed was the bedroom, which I was to stay in. There was a heavy weight in that room, as well as a red pentagram on the wall. My father had attempted to paint over it multiple times before having me move to a different room, because no matter what color he tried, it always showed through. We went ahead and fully moved in. 
It was about a month after we moved in that we started to see things. The first was my mother. She began seeing this child, who looked exactly like my brother, running around the house, even though she would be home alone and knew he was at school. This happened on numerous occasions, and it wasn't the only place we stayed in that she saw him. Next to experience something like this was me. I would wake up in the middle of the night to see what looked like an older man outside my window. I was on the second floor, so for him to reach my window, he would need a ladder. This man looked to be about 60 to 70 years old, with a hat and glowing red eyes. I would freeze in fear every time I saw him. I would lay there, staring at him as he stared at me for an immeasurable amount of time, before I would ultimately gain the courage to get up and run to my parents' room. I would wake both of them up, screaming about a man in the window. My father would immediately go and look, coming back to say that no one was there. After I did this a few times, my father got annoyed and finally put curtains up on my window. The problem with that was, after a few nights with the curtains up, the man seemed to move to my closet. I would wake up to the sound of it opening just a crack. All I would see was one glowing red eye looking at me through this crack. I got my dad to take off the curtains, since I would rather see him outside than in my room. My father and brother would experience things together. The main activity they experienced was glass shattering into small pieces without anyone next to it. In our living room, we had a glass coffee table. On this occasion, my brother was on the opposite side of the room, playing with his toys and watching TV. My father was entering the room from the kitchen, about to ask what my brother wanted for lunch. That's when the table shattered into pieces as soon as he took a step into the room. According to my dad, there was a loud boom when it shattered. My father got the table replaced with a wooden one after that. On another occasion, we were all in the room when a glass of water shattered out of nowhere. At one point, my father was in the bathroom giving my brother a bath when the mirror shattered. We stayed in that house for about six months before moving yet again. This was just the start of what was to come. I don't know if it was bad luck or if there was something attached to us, but nearly every time we moved, we had experiences. These days, I live with my boyfriend, and we've lived in two different houses and still have problems. Just a few days ago, we both heard walking on the stairs and the back door opening and closing. We went through the house and searched, but found no one. The best part was that the door was still locked. There's so much that has happened in my life, and it still goes on, and I'm not sure if it'll ever stop. My Terrifying Home Alone Experience From Oh No, It's a Ghost, 52 It was a typical weekend afternoon. I was sitting on my couch watching some YouTube. Suddenly, my mom said, Your dad is at your grandpa's and I have to take your brothers to their soccer games. Keep your phone on. You'll be home alone for a while. She then speed walked to the other room, asking my brothers if they had their things ready. I smiled. I always enjoyed being home alone. My brothers were frankly annoying, and my parents were the masters of nagging. This would be the only time I had to myself, with some peace and quiet. Before long, I heard the car back out of the garage, followed by the unmistakable sound of the garage door shutting. I settled in, watching even more YouTube for a while. Eventually, I began to hear these light footsteps in my parents' room. I quickly dismissed it as my imagination, or perhaps a sound from the video, and ignored it. But then, the footsteps got louder. I started to get scared, but I didn't want to get up. 
I decided it was my dog making the noise, so I continued to watch the video. Suddenly, it sounded like someone was stomping around in my parents' room. This time, I knew I could no longer make excuses. There was something wrong. Fearing for the worst, I grabbed a kitchen knife and made my way up the stairs to my parents' room. Hey, I yelled out, trying to make my voice deeper to sound like I was an adult. Whoever you are, get out of my house. I've called the cops. I'm armed. No response. Adrenaline welled up inside me as I approached my parents' room, but I reminded myself that I had the knife so I could defend myself if necessary. The sun was beginning to set now, which made the walk down the hallway to my parents' room even more unsettling. I took a deep breath, and I turned the corner into my parents' room. At first, I looked in and saw nothing. Just a dark room and a small digital clock at the end, providing just a little bit of light. But I felt relieved too soon. Just as I was about to turn away, I saw a small disturbance in the light at the bottom of the digital clock, and that disturbance was rising. It looked as though someone had just decided to stand up slowly in front of the digital clock. I held my breath as the disturbance rose above the light from the digital clock until there was no light remaining. Then I ran. I bolted into my brother's room, locking the door. Then I called my girlfriend. Now, before you ridicule me for not calling 911, I didn't think that the operator would believe me if I told them there was a ghost in my house. My girlfriend, on the other hand, was experienced with this kind of stuff. All the houses she had ever stayed in, she claims had paranormal things happen in them. After two rings, she picked up. I told her what was going on in a panicked voice. Okay, okay, calm down. Let me think. Suddenly, I heard heavy footsteps coming down the hallway towards the room. My heart raced even faster. I pleaded into the phone. Is there anything holy in the room? She asked. I looked at the nearby wall. There was a cross hung up there. The footsteps were getting louder and closer. I snatched the cross off the wall. Now what? I asked, panicking. It should protect you, she replied. I hoped she was right. Suddenly, our call ended. I looked down to see that my phone had died, even though it was on 70% five minutes ago. I listened to the footsteps, slowly getting louder and louder, until they stopped in front of the door. I noticed a little bit of dark smoke or steam coming from beneath the door, and I could hear heavy breathing. I held my own breath and hoped for the best. Suddenly, the smoke dissipated. I heard the footsteps leaving, and the breathing sound stopped. This continued until everything went quiet. Then, I heard the garage door open and the car pulling in. I proceeded downstairs to meet my mom, but I didn't share this story with her. Even though I have not seen the thing that terrorized me in a long time, I am still very much scared of my parents' room, and I have not stayed home alone since. My Weird Childhood Poltergeist From Jolly Jello I recently discovered that I have aphantasia, a mental dysfunction of sorts that doesn't allow you to create mental images. The best way I can describe it is thinking about a computer, where everything works perfectly fine, except for the screen. And suddenly, my childhood became even weirder. I was around 10 years old. At the time, it was when things started to get weird and my strange occurrences were at their peak. You see, seeing shadows became a natural occurrence during the day and night. But this one isn't about shadows. 
this was a bit more physical. If you are a fan of horror films, you surely know about poltergeists. They're basically spirits that move objects and interact with them. Well, I believe I've seen one of them at my own house. Here's the deal. I've got a younger brother that had a very weak immune system. Every month, he and my parents would go to the pediatrician, and they would take so long there it was torture for me. So eventually, they let me stay home since we lived in a nice neighborhood, and I had never misbehaved before. Like, come on, we all know the rules. Don't answer the door for anyone, don't talk to strangers, and if someone sees you and asks about your parents, tell them they're in the shower or sleeping. Besides, I was used to this. They would go, and in about one to two hours, they would be back. Nothing new. On this day, I'd seen a shadow on the window of the living room. But when my father went to see, there was nothing. It was just my imagination. So they went on to the doctors while I stayed home, as always. And as soon as they left, I began to feel weird, like I was being watched. As this feeling continued, I decided to go to the yard. It would be better to get this ick away, as I started playing with sticks and some toys I'd put there. I began to feel safe again, immersed in my telenovelas that I would make with my Barbies and teddy bears. It was nice, until I went to get my volleyball to practice my throws, as my mom had taught me. As I was getting closer, I saw the ball moving, not just going from one side to the other. It was floating as if another person had picked it up and suddenly just let go of it. I ran inside and barricaded myself in my parents' bathroom. I must have stayed there for about 40 minutes before I calmed myself down. Then I saw something that gave me hope. The door handle moved, as if someone was trying to open it. My parents must be home, I thought. I ran to unlock the door, and as I did, there was nobody there. I ran to the garage. The car wasn't there. My parents weren't home. I was alone. I barricaded myself in the social bathroom as it was closer. I don't know for how long I was in there, paying attention to the light that passed under the door and the windows. It was nerve-wracking. All that anxiety building up, thinking that was the end of me. I stayed put until I heard the car pull into the driveway along with my parents' voices and my brothers crying. I was bawling when I opened that door. They asked me if it was because I was worried, as they took longer than usual to be back. I don't know why, but I simply told them yes. That was when I started locking the door every time I went into the bathroom, and I never ever took a shower if there wasn't someone home. This was around 10 years ago and I still can't do anything without twisting that lock and closing those windows. To be honest, the thing that scares me the most today is the strength and confidence that thing used on that handle. It really wanted to get in. Thank you for listening to Unexplained Encounters. If you enjoy this show, think about supporting us there are several ways you can. Search for EerieCast on your favorite podcast app and follow our other scary shows, especially the other two I host, Tales from the Break Room and Camping Horrors. Leave Unexplained Encounters a rating on Spotify and a review on Apple Podcasts. The more we get, the higher we climb in the charts. Get some cool merch at EerieCast.store or unlock tons of cool extras like exclusive audiobooks and music tracks, add free access to all our shows, and a huge 20% discount on all our merch, all for less than three bucks a month by signing up for EerieCast Plus at EerieCast.com plus. Thank you. Until next time, send me your scariest stories of the unexplained at darkstories.org so I can narrate them in a future episode. And follow me on X, formerly Twitter, at Dark Prevails, for plenty of screams and memes. 
stay safe out there and stay creepy because this world is a strange one.